uh, I'd love to see just, again, it's a bit similar, but like a whole systemic approach on this, um, not, not like fragmented downstream or just upstream or anything, but um, across up, down, left, right throughout organisations. Yeah, and I think where we've got this, you know, legislation framing psych health and safety as an OHS or a work health and safety duty, um, I think that we need to be really clear that that doesn't mean that your health and safety team owns the whole thing. Um, mm. Because where your interventions or controls are going to sit are going to be in all types of different management systems across the organisation. So, you know, in the same way that your health and safety team might have ownership of the risk management process in saying, okay, this is when we need to do it and now we're going to initiate it and we might facilitate that, that process of identifying hazards and, you know, assessing the risk associated with that what comes out of that as how do we resolve this risk or how do we reduce the risk, that's not necessarily going to be owned by the health mm. and safety team. So it Precise. might be that, you know, we've got cracks in the foundation of this bridge, so we need to go and hand this over to the civil engineering team for the solution. And mm. so from, exactly. a, um, from a psych health and safety perspective, well, what is – What's the issue here? Is it that our performance management system is really opaque and nobody knows what's expected of them? Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to potentially HR as the owner of the performance management system. Um, is it that our leaders are promoted for technical competency rather than people skills? And so that comes to potentially L&D or, you know, how are we actually um, – developing our position descriptions for those leadership roles, how are we, um, you know, doing assessment or whatever it is to, to and development to get people into those roles. So while your health and safety team might own the risk management process, the point at which we need to actually do the sense making, as you've said, and come up with actions. I think that that's really where you need all of that collaboration from those different functional teams across the organisation to actually say, well, what's mm -hmm. the sensible solution to this problem and who needs to take ownership of that? And I think that potentially that is where the the OD function can really mm -hmm. come into its own. And I think that that, like that function is oftentimes overlooked um, within organisations, but that OD I think is, is a lot of the time where that skill sits. That's really interesting. It's like a nerve center, isn't it? It's like receiving input and then sending signals back out into the organization or the organism to, you know, adapt and control and tighten things up or loosen things up. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. 